It is not just you who make yourselves husband and wife by your decision to marry. It's not the words that I say or uh, the statutes of the state that we live in as they uh, license and, and recognize your marriage, but it is God who joins you together. But this is also a permanent relationship because Jesus said what God has joined together, let no man separate. You're entering into a covenant with one another today, a covenant with each other as you vow to each other to be one, as you vow not just to be one today, but to become one. And Jesus said that, uh, that you will become one flesh and it's a process over the years as you uh, become one. When Jesus said, uh, let not man separate, he's telling you that this is a permanent relationship that is never to be separated. And it's God who joins you together, it's your love that holds you together, but also it's your responsibility to work at this relationship, to keep your unity and to cause it to grow stronger. So the first time I met Preston was when he was working at Smoothie King and I think I was so taken aback by how he was so willing to just chat back and forth and I've never had anybody be so kind and open and welcoming just to anybody. You don't see that every day, you don't see that with everyone. So. The first time I met him was pretty special and it just stuck with me and the next time I met him was we were both in college and it was Mom, you are so extra. Yeah. This is damn extra. extra. Oh, yeah. I'm left now. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I'm sorry. No, it's all mom's fault. <laughs> um the next time we met was in college and a bunch of mutual friends were having a party. There, I got his name wrong. When Jesus said, let not man separate, I don't think he was promising that there would never be any threats to your unity, because there will be. But what he's saying is it's your responsibility never to let any of those things separate you but to, to grow closer and closer together and continue to become one flesh. So your, your relationship with one another is a very special and unique relationship. It's a sacred relationship and it's a permanent relationship, one that will never be parted by anything other than death. Days run, nights fall away See lights guide me they Who brings this woman to be married to this man? My mother and I. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things believes all things, hopes all things, 
endures all things. Love never fails. first met um, first met her as Smoothie King a while back and we didn't even know each other during that time but uh, we kind of the first time we ever locked eyes we went ahead and got off really well uh, she we just started talking joking and just like we've been friends for a long time and it probably went for months till we saw each other again but she ended up being good friends with another buddy of mine and uh, they were driving down Zebulon Road, probably about a mile from where I live. And just, she's a fast driver, she was speeding. So cop finds her, turns around, chases her down. They flee the cops, head to my house and uh, park there. And my friend gives me a call a few times while I'm playing Assassin's Creed. <laughs> and I uh, finally answer, it was a good thing that I did. I went outside and that is where we met. And that spark from when we first met at Smoothie King just stayed ignited and we went on from there. And here we are today. Preston and Erica, in these words that I've just read, the words of Jesus, we find a description of what marriage is. And you've studied these and considered these and other teachings from the Bible and have agreed that that's exactly what you want for your lives together as a husband and wife. In these words, Jesus points out what a special and unique relationship marriage is. He says that a man shall leave his father and mother. I know both of you are very close to your parents and what a beautiful relationship you have with them. And Jesus compares this relationship that you're entering into to that relationship. In fact, it even surpasses that relationship because Jesus said you leave that relationship to be joined together and to become one flesh. There's no other person in the world that you have such an intimate and close relationship with as one to whom you are joined to become one flesh. So what a beautiful and unique relationship this is. It's also a sacred relationship. Jesus talks about God really more than the people who are being married in this passage. He says that God made them male and female for this purpose. He said that God is the one who said that a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And then most significant of all, Jesus said it is God who joins you together when he said, what God has joined together, let no man separate. He says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is its savior. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church, and gave himself up for her. In the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies, he who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. Knows, cause all that matters 
is how far this goes And it will go until it starts again oh, oh. Me and you are good like armor Nothing can stop love from love no less And I'm not asking for much Just a couple of Preston, will you take Erica for your wife according to the sacred covenant of marriage as taught by Jesus Christ in the Bible? Will you be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ? Will you bestow honor on her and care for Erica's needs before looking out for your own needs? Will you make your love for her unconditional and your commitment to her faithful and loyal for as long as you both shall live? I will. Erica, will you take Preston for your husband According to the sacred covenant of marriage as taught by Jesus Christ in the Bible, will you be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ? Will you respect him as the church respects Christ? Will you make your love for him unconditional and your commitment to him faithful and loyal for as long as you both shall live? I will. I, Preston, take you, Erica. I, Preston, take you, Erica. To be my wife. To be my wife. To have and to hold from this day forth. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. This is our sacred covenant. This is our sacred covenant. I, Erica, take you, Preston. I, Erica, take you, Preston. To be my husband. To be my husband. To have and to hold from this day forth. To have and to hold from this day forth. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. This is my solemn vow. This is my solemn vow. This is our sacred covenant. This is our sacred covenant. These are very beautiful rings, and I'm sure you've paid a dear price for them. They're made of special material, diamonds and gold, and, and they're very costly, and they'll be very important to you because of that. But they're much more special than the materials they're made of, much more special than whatever monetary value they have, because these rings are emblems of what has just happened here today. These are symbols of the vows that you have just taken, of the love that you've just expressed, the unending love that you've just expressed for one another. And as you wear them, you can always remember when you look at this ring that today the person you love stood before these people here today, friends and family and before God, and made these vows to you, permanent sacred vows. And so what a beautiful symbol these things are for you to wear and to remember each day for the rest of your lives. Preston, will you take Erica's ring and put it on her finger? Erica, with this ring. Erica, with this ring. <laughs> I give you myself. I give you myself. All that I am and all that I have. All that I am and all that I have. This ring is a token of my commitment. This ring is the token of my commitment. Of my commitment. <laughs> and faithfulness to you and faithfulness to you and of the unconditional love and of the unconditional love I promise you I promise you this ring is an emblem 
This ring is an emblem of the sacred covenant of the sacred covenant we make here today. We make here today. Preston, with this ring, Preston, with this ring, I give you myself. I give you myself. All that I am and all that I have. All that I am and all that I have. This ring is a token. This ring is a token of my commitment. Of my commitment and faithfulness to you. And faithfulness to you. And of the unconditional love. And of the unconditional love. I promise you. I promise you. This ring is an emblem. This ring is an emblem of the sacred covenant. Of the sacred covenant we make here today. We make here today. Preston and Erica, I now pronounce you husband and wife. And I kiss the bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Preston Marker.